What up, though, Pride Nation? This is Luke G, and this is the Field Review. Today, we back with another film session, this time of Notre Dame linebacker Tavon Coney. Uh, I want to give a shout out to 1991 Max Stag for suggesting that I take a close look at Mr. Coney. And what I find is that Mr. Coney is a very solid inside linebacker. When he's with inside the hash marks. Um, so just to give you a quick read on Mr. Coney, we're going to start off with his strengths. He is very good at getting off the block. Uh, he is best, I mean really at his best, when he's in between the hash marks. Once he get outside the hash marks, you know, it's going to be a little suspect. He is very solid against the run. He's a very solid ta tackler. He's a smart player who loves contact. Um, but when we get to the weakness, he does not seem that fast to me. Uh, I would not be surprised if he runs in a low 4 6 nines, the low 4 6 to uh, 4 7 mark. I would not be surprised if he ran that. He takes bad angles at times, uh, especially when they get outside the hash marks. He is, he's, he is average at best in coverage as long as it's within the hash marks. Um, he has the most stiff hips I have ever seen in my entire life. He's poor at changing direction. Um, he loves contact. And I know you're going to probably think, well, you just said that he loves contact as a strength. But, yeah, it's also a weakness because uh, there's times when he needs to avoid a blocker versus initiating contact with the blocker to make the play and he has a very uh lackluster change of direction his mechanics and change of direction which stems from him getting flat footed at times and him not opening his hips so we'll start here at the uh northwestern 2018 game and we're going to start here and what i love about this play is he does a very good job of reading and reacting. He was great in, in playing the gap, but he needed to keep running. And, then, and if he keeps running, he'll make this tackle in the backfield versus where he made the tackle. But what you will see here is, not only does he make the tackle, he does a good job of adjusting to still get the tackle. So we'll start here. And as you can see, he's highlighted here. And I want you to focus on it. And I'll do it in uh, normal speed, and then I'll slow it down so we can kind of take a better look. So normal speed, as you see, he's coming up, and boom, good gap. Now, there are some things that happen here that I want to go back and take a look at. Because I believe if he maintains discipline, or he just fully commit to what he was doing, this is a tackle for a loss. So we'll start here. Again, he's right here. He's inside linebacker. All right. And right here, we're going to stop. So he, he finally decides to commit. And he takes this gap. And that's good. He, 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 he committed to a, an assignment. Now he's going to stop in the gap. And I don't know why he does this. Because if he just keeps going, this guy's got to try to make a move back here. Well, he stops, and now as he stops, he's peeling back off towards here. The running back takes this gap. He comes up um, like he's supposed to, but he's going to come off and still make the tackle. Now, at this point, he's already picked up a yard or two. But if he would have just kept running, he would have had him back here. So, you know, little minor things, but nothing crazy. And again, I want you to be mindful. This is all within the hash mark. You're going to hear me say this quite often, that this is all within the hash mark because that's the thing that I'm looking at. Uh, when we go to our next timestamp, which comes in at the 39 second mark, right about here. He does not uh, do anything that upsets me. He's right here. But I want you to see how stiff he looks in coverage. And I'll put this on normal speed because... I don't even got to slow it down to show you how bad it looks. But he's right here. It's obviously highlighted. And when he 
goes into coverage, you're going to see how, look, what is this? What is this? Like, let's go back really quick. And I want you to see what I mean about how he gets flat-footed. Um, because this, this is, I think it's a, a issue that can be corrected with coaching. Um, again, he's right here. All right. And watch his feet and his hips. Look at this. I don't know. That's not a back pedal. That change of direction was terrible. And this, granted, nothing happened. I just want you to see what he, what he's doing right here what we're going to see is this guy does a good job of covering in between the hash marks and he's right here and as you see he's coming he's coming boom he sees this guy coming across good job good job as long as the tight end is slow and it's in between the hash marks he's got that covered uh, at the 211 mark, what we're going to see here is he's right here. This is him. And what you're going to see here is he's going to show a great deal of patience as he reads the play. But what bothered me a little bit about this play and something that I saw as a trend with him is he lacks that pop. What I mean by that pop is once he could miss to that tackle, it's not like he's, he's coming with this amount of force that's going to let the person who he's hitting know, hey, I'm here. So, we're going to go right here. Keep an eye on him right here. Does a great job of showing patience. And he's looking. And I got it in slow mo because I want you to see it. Look at the patience. Look at the patience of the hole. And nothing. Now, I'm going to bring it back. And we're going to do it in fast time. Because I know some people are going to say, well, oh, Luke, you slowed it down. And that's why I don't look aggressive. Well, to my critics, I just want you to be, be able to see for yourself in normal speed that he doesn't bring that pop. And he's not always attacking. He's, he's, he's very patient in, in his approach. And if he attacks in his approach, he'll bring more force, more energy because he's building up speed. But again, we'll take a look at it. He's right here. So we'll take a look at it. Normal speed. Patience, patience. Boom. The running back still pushed him back. Okay. And he's not a small linebacker. Okay. So, but right here has to be one of my favorite uh, pieces because what you're going to see is he's right here. He's going to get off this block brilliantly. Look at this. Get off of me. Get off of me. Now, if y'all missed that, we'll go back. And I want you to see that these are the two trends. Inside the hash marks, he's amazing. Getting off blocks, he's amazing. He's right here, okay? And we're gonna watch this. Boom. He's getting blocked. Watch how he gets this guy off of him. Ugh, get off of me. Now, this is things that you can't ask for. That's what you want from a linebacker. You want a guy who is going to get off those blocks, okay? And you want a guy um, of, of taking it on. I can show you multiple shots of him uh, getting off the blocks. But I want to show you where the strengths are. He's right here. And what I love about this one is he's going to do a very good job of shooting the gap. Okay, and when he shoots the gap, he makes the play that is required of him. So he's going to shoot the gap. Perfect, gets in there. But again, notice the running backs are always falling forward, and that's because he's waiting on the play to come to him in a way. And 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 if he just focuses on attacking, I think he makes more plays. But then I got to go to and show y'all the bad. I believe that he gets gassed. When he is gassed, he does not always make the best decisions. But this has nothing to do with being tired. This has something to do with him being flat-footed. And what you see is, is he's right here. And he's coming down. And you're going to see him get his feelings hurt by the blocker. Watch what happens with this blocker. 
when he gets flat footed. This is what happens when you stop your momentum, okay? When you stop your momentum, the way he's stopping his momentum, you're going to get drilled. And the reason he got drilled is because he got flat footed. Now, right here, his feet ain't moving. If his feet was moving, he's not getting put in the dirt like this. Now, let me be clear. This is a rarity. This does not happen often, okay? But it happened. And it looked bad. And he just got, yeah, he got his feelings hurt. Let's go to 423. What I love about this is Northwestern does a quarterback sneak. So y'all want to keep an eye on him. So they does a quarterback sneak and they get the touchdown. However, I want you to see what he does right here. This is Mr. Coney. And what you're going to see is he does a very good job of being disciplined and staying in that gap and meeting him at the line of scrimmage. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I can't ask for much more than that. I'm going to go to 552 because I'm going to show you what happens and why I believe he gets gassed or, or panicked at times and he forgets his technique. So he's right here as highlighted. And what you're going to see is they're going to throw a nice little uh, screen uh, and he's going to see it. And what he is going to do is instead of doing his uh, regular stick, of keeping his integrity and breaking down see right here he should break down and get ready for the tackle it's a blocker coming but what he does is some john madden throw yourself out of the play tackling technique and when he does this look at this he literally threw himself out the play the blocker just make sure that he doesn't have a chance he just cuts outside doesn't get far but he cuts outside which is still a good thing that he did to force him back in but he could have made that play if he just breaks down and forced that runner back to make some decisions let's go to 613 and i think what bothered me here is he's right here and he's he's going to bite on the read option okay that's fine everybody gets caught up sometimes what i have a problem with is once the quarterback takes off because he's going to keep it he's going to see the quarterback with the ball and he's just not going to give chase and if you've been watching my videos you know i can't stand no hustling lazy players now he doesn't do it often but he's did it enough to where it's a bit of a concern for me and especially when you don't have the speed but we'll take a look at it so he's here and he's going to do a very good job. He bites on the read. Get off the block right here. Now, once he gets off this blocker, that's another uh, uh, blocker there. He's looking at the quarterback. Okay? Y'all can see this. Watch what he does now that, that he's looking at the quarterback. I, I, I don't know if he just figured all oh, the plays dead or he thought oh it's over with but let's just say hypothetically that's Russell Wilson or let's say that's Aaron Rodgers for, for those people who, who want to stick to our division let's say that's Aaron Rodgers or Mitchell Trubisky you think a linebacker on our team can do that you think we can afford to have a linebacker just oh I'm done I'm out of breath we, we can't afford that now where I'll get back to what he does great comes at 701 he's going to kill this blocker's dreams okay i want y'all to see why why Notre dame wanted this kid he's going to kill the blocker's dreams no nope. boom Dude, listen listen ladies and gentlemen this is what makes this guy so good and and mind you everything i'm showing you is in between the hashes when he's in this range it's all bad for you. It's almost like he's Superman. And as soon as he get outside those hashes, you get a little kryptonite. Okay? But I want you to see this. How he's going to ruin this blocker's dreams. Okay? Right here. Right here. He's waiting, waiting. Nope. Boom. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's all you can ask for for an inside linebacker. So he's very good against the run. Now, he's not fast. I can show multiple things of that. I'm not even going to waste the energy. Um, but I do want to show you another example of poor footwork. So right there, you see him highlighted. All right. Now watch this. What is this? What is this? Doesn't drop his butt or hips to change the direction or nothing. And if you missed it, I'm going to give it to you in slow-mo. Why? Because I really want you to be able to evaluate the linebacker position as it should be. He needs to work on lowering his center of gravity so he can change the direction appropriately and do it with good and proper technique. He's not doing it. So right here, watch what he does. Perfect stance, boom, step, look at them feet. What is that? They all over each other. Okay, they go to back. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to get it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so now we are in the Vanderbilt 2018 footage. And we are at the 250 mark. And what I, what I point out about this particular play is, excuse me, I apologize. Uh, what I pointed out about this play was, it looked like to me he could have did some serious damage or at least had the sack, but it looks like he pulled up to me. And I'll do it in normal speed because maybe I'm tripping, but y'all tell me. It looked like he pulled up to me. So he's going to go, ball snaps, and it looked like he pulls up. Is it just me or did he pull up? Okay. And when I do it in slow-mo, it still looks like he pulled up to me. And I don't know if that's him not trying to hurt his team or he just pulled up because he didn't want to get a late hit or what. But I do I do like some aggression. So once he goes here and, yep, he pulls up. Run through that guy. Run through him. Because at that point, I doubt they throw a flag there. But he could be avoiding the targeting. So I'm not going to knock him on that. So let's go to 9-13. All right, so we'll go to the 913 mark. And what I noticed about this particular play is he does an amazing job reading the play. He does an amazing job seeing the blockers uh, block down, and he does a great job of getting rid of the blocker. But once that running back cut back, here come that lazy pursuit or that gas pursuit. I, I got to believe he's tired, okay? And I'm gonna give I'm gonna give him exhaustion, okay? Because I, I I like this linebacker, but again, it's between the hash marks. So he's right here, and what you're going to see is they're going to all block down like this. The running back's going to come here, but he's going to then cut back over here, and you're not going to see him come in the picture at all. I just want y'all to pay attention to how much time I'm doing, and I'm gonna count by Mississippi. So let's. Let's take a look and see what happens. From the time the play gets cut back out. Ready? Let's go. He's got the highlight. We in, we in slow motion. You can see it. And everybody blocks down. He does a good job. And now he is going to get off the block. And I see you see the running back going. And I want you to see that the running back's going. Now right here, anybody, show me where number four is at anybody because i promise you're not going to see him i'm going to show you where number four is at right about here what you're going to see is he's nowhere still not in the picture and if i go back and i show it to you in a more detailed way so you can kind of see some of the things that i'm looking at and why i'm giving them praise is because again we just i just want you to see that he does outside the hash marks is over with. So he's right here. This is him on the blocker. He's going to get rid of that blocker. That's beautiful. Now he's here. Where's the hustle? And that can't happen, ladies and gentlemen. You know that bothers me. You know it's something that I am not a fan of. We're going to show you his cover skills because I believe against slow tight ends, he is phenomenal within the hash marks. 
but against tight ends that are faster in the hash marks or say a running back who's shifty like a Theo Reddick in the hash marks, he gonna have some problems. What I want you to do is, is look, they are still within the hash marks. He's here. Not only does he let this tight end blow past him, he actually loses track of the tight end, okay? And what you're gonna see is, is that the tight end get there, he runs out. Now, if you go back just a little bit, you're gonna see him break his route out and go out here, okay? Just a little, a little out route, nothing special. And somehow he lost track of him, right? And I want you to see what's funny about this. Because that's his guy going here. You clearly saw him make this move. He's here. I have no clue where he's going. I have no clue at what he thought he saw or what he's chasing. But this is a receiver. And he somehow lost his tight end who is now behind him going to make the catch to chase a receiver who was covered by a cornerback. Shout out to Julian Love down here. But who is he looking at? Okay. Like he just, I don't even know how that happened. Okay, so we are now in the Stanford 2018 game. And Mr. Coney is right here. And what you're going to see is he's going to do a great job of keeping patient, avoiding the blocker, and maintaining gap responsibility to make the tackle. Okay? And to show you it in a, a, of a little bit of a slow motion so we can see it, I want you to see all these things that I point out. Now, the first thing is he's right here. All right? So, boom. Good patience. Good patience. Watch. Gap is, oh, look at that. That's gap integrity. He makes the tackle. Those is what he does best. And I want you to go back and we're going to start with it's at. It's in the hash marks, people. Okay? This guy's a run stuffer within the hash marks. His his uh, coverage is, is average at best. It's average, okay? Um, but these are the things that they do. We're going to go to the 31 second mark. Because again, I want to show you how this dude works. Um, so let's start right here. So he's right here. I want you to see what he does to this blocker. He's going to get rid of this blocker and make the tackle. Okay. And as he comes up, boom, take on the food back, get out of here. That's what you're going to get from this guy. Okay. You want to put you want to put him in the booth with a with a with a gator, and see who come out. He's coming out, okay. He's that little that little space that little window. He's that's where he's at his best, okay. When we start getting outside that window, it gets real suspect. And I'm gonna show you that right here when we come to 209, all right. And right here, what you're gonna see is it's gonna get outside that window. And the first thing you're going to notice is the ball is on the right hash. So the wide side of the field is going to be to his right, their left. And the play is going to go to their left. And what I want you to see is he's going to run down there, but it's going to be a really bad angle. And it's going to allow for the running back to get more yards because he knows that he has a bad angle. So he's right here. Let's keep a close eye on him and see what happens. And I'm going to walk you through it. So now he reads it. Perfect. Let me let me be clear, ladies and gentlemen. Once he makes this read, that's perfect. All oh, that's beautiful. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, once he avoids the blockers, look at this. This is all him, okay? But if he just keeps his angle right here, okay, even if the running back cuts back, he's cutting back into traffic. He's going to... Square out his 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 uh pursuit, which gives the running back more room to work. Now, right here, he's already squaring out his pursuit. But if you, if you remember, if he just stays straight, that's his easy tackle. But because he squared it out and he's still squaring it out, look at look how much, look how many more yards this guy is getting. And not only does he not get more yards, he gets completely to the outside. How does that happen? Okay, 
How does that happen? Now, I know somebody's going to say that is Bryce Love. It is. But discipline and gap assignment and pursuit angles are more important than who the player is. Barry Sanders didn't just kill everybody. People who kept discipline with their techniques were able to neutralize Barry. So this guy is now here. Now at this point, I'm going to go back a little bit. I want y'all to see this. He already squared it out. If you're going to square it out right here, you still should be looking to tackle back here. He is at the, what looks like the 21 yard line. Okay. So he ends up at 35. You gave up all that? That's a that's a hell of a play from the running back. But it's even better when your linebacker take a bad angle. And then for the final play, I want to show you his coverage skills and why I say they're about average at best. And I want you to see that they are on the uh, left hash mark, okay, right here. And all he's going to do is stay within these hash marks. That's his that's his window, people. And I want you to see what happens. Now, the tight end runs his route. They're in the hash marks. And what happens in that hash mark? An interception. Okay? An interception. So, here is my overall view of Mr. Tavon Coney from Notre Dame. He is a solid linebacker who will play the run at the highest level. He's a tackling machine. He has no issues with uh, taking on a blocker. He is not that great at blitzing. He does lack speed. He does lack acceleration and burst. Uh, he does get flat footed at times. But overall, he is a solid, smart inside linebacker. He understands his limitations. And that's why sometimes you don't see him hustling. It's because he knows there's no way in heck he's going to ever get there. But I believe in effort and I give effort points. If you're looking for somebody that can aid your team in shutting down the run, you take this linebacker. If you're looking for somebody who is going to show a good, decent uh, read and reaction to passing plays, you take this linebacker. But if you're looking for a linebacker to do any type of coverage, you don't want this linebacker. If you're looking for a linebacker to be a heavy, hard-hitting linebacker, you don't want this linebacker. If you're looking for a linebacker to be someone who's going to give you a little bit of a thud, you probably want this linebacker. Is this a solid pickup that I would like to see on the Detroit Lions? Not for what I want my Detroit Lions to do. And you Lions fans shouldn't want them for what they're going to do. Because once he gets outside those hash marks, it gets real. that The, the exposed sessions start outside the hash marks. But if you can keep him in that box, that little space, this guy is as high of a linebacker that i ever seen. And I'm a snob when it comes to this position because I played it. So if I was looking at this pick and I'm thinking, would I be okay the Lions took this guy? If he's in the second round, probably I would. But would I, would I be expecting him to do anything outside of the hash marks? No. So that's my film review for Tavon Coney at this moment. And until next time, don't be no chump. Do your research.